Welcome to this week's edition of Outdoors Online, a weekly webcast produced by the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. I'm your host, Tom Jensen. My guest this week is Fisheries Division Chief Greg Power. We're going to talk about how lakes in the state are faring in this unusual winter. Greg, uh, your crews are starting to do their testing about now, right? Yeah, their, their water quality, their winter water quality sampling, it takes place every winter from well, roughly mid-January through maybe mid-February. And each of the six fishery districts, they get out to not all their lakes, but most of their lakes, especially the, you know, the quality lakes. They'll get out there, do it every winter. They sample the same spot in the lake, which is typically the deepest portion of the lake. How do uh, they sample? Well, they have what they call hydro. We have different electronic gear. It's done electronically nowadays, mm -hmm. uh, and it's really quick. It's really fairly painless other than dealing with the weather, but you just, you know, drill your hole, drop down this, this unit, and it, we get readings every meter as you go down from, from the surface down to the, to the uh, bottom of the lake. Uh, and we're looking at, in the winter, we're looking at primarily just dissolved oxygen. We get a few other uh, parameters, but dissolved oxygen is a critical thing we're looking at in the winter. And that tells you whether or not a lake might be susceptible to winter kill. Sure, correct? sure. I mean, and, you know, even, even middle of January, if the levels are really high, you know, from top to bottom, we might be in decent shape. Um, oftentimes what you'll see is a real drop off as you go to the bottom. And, it, and conversely, if we go out there right now and we see oxygen, you know, less than a part per million top to bottom, we know we might be in some serious trouble. Speaking of generalities, where do we stand right now? Not specific lakes or no. anything, but... Right. Uh, we're, again, the guys are just starting, so it's, it's a little too early to tell. Um, a couple of the districts are doing sampling a few specific lakes, some lakes that we had concern it going last fall, going into winter. And uh, actually, so far, so good in a, in a handful of lakes, but it's really not a good test. It's just a small sample, but we have not heard from the public, nor do we have any data yet to show that we've got for sure a winter kill in a given lake, but we're, we're, we suspect by the, you know, come April, we'll, we'll hear quite a bit. We should explain, Greg, the reason that there is concern this particular winter is the amount of snow Correct. that's on the ice. The more snow, the less sunlight that gets through and things like that. Correct. Correct. Yep, yep. It, the, the game changer this winter compared to the last couple where we ver basically had no snow on the ice. And we, you know, conversely, again, we really didn't have much at all for winter kill. But we do know that in the winters that we have a lot of snowpack, especially when the snow comes early and it's deep, uh, we, we tend to have a lot more winter kill. You go back, I believe it was about five winters ago. Uh, one winter we had, I believe it was 58 lakes in the state that had partial or, or significant winter kill. That, and that was the worst case scenario. But given the snow out there this winter, we may be going down that direction. We are expecting a couple of weeks of warmer temperatures. I won't say warm temperatures, but at least warmer than what we had. Is that going to help melt some of this yeah. snow? And is it going to help the situation at all? Well, it helps us. I mean, it makes us feel better about life, I guess, <laughs> for a while. But, uh, you know, the infamous January thaw, uh, in the big picture, no, it really doesn't. I mean, it, the temperatures may get into the 30s, touch 40 degrees. But it's so brief during, you know, the days are still so short. And you look at the temperature for the entire 24 hour period, it's below freezing most that day, even if it does touch 40 degrees. You don't, you just don't get, a, and the, the sun angle is still pretty low. You just don't get much thawing out there in January. Uh, it will settle across the snowpack and stuff like that, but it's not gonna be substantial in the big picture. If nothing else, it may help access a little oh, bit, I guess. Right, right, and access has been a real issue this winter yeah. too. And it will, it, it, you know, and the lack of wind will help too, and we've had that, but uh, we're hearing, you know, in the last week or two here, uh, through mid-January, we're hearing a few, few farmers, landowners, you know, uh, wildlife groups are punching in some holes to a few lakes, and there's, where there is access to a fishing lake, we're getting some fishing pressure out there. People are, they, they do have the itch to get out there, but uh, in, the, in the big picture, again, we're way, way down as far as winter uh, fishing activity. We as an agency are managing a lot more lakes than we used to, and a lot of these lakes are small, opportunistic lakes that are very shallow. Those, I would guess, are more susceptible to winter kill than the big. 
absolutely. Uh, it's the size of the lake and you know, probably the, the most critical thing is the, the depth, especially maximum depth. If we have a maximum depth of 14, especially 16 feet and deeper, we usually are okay on winter kill. It's those shallow lakes that maybe only eight, 10 feet deep, those tend to winter kill, especially in a winter like this. So, Not only are they susceptible to winter kill, they're also susceptible to drying up, which the last well, several years we didn't have a lot of snow. Right, and if there's some good news to all the snow, and there is, uh, it's the potential for some real significant runoff this spring. And a lot of our lakes, especially probably in the southern half, southern two thirds of the state, are down two, three, four feet and could use a, a, a nice little spring rise out there. And, and if that happens, then it's also usually a good thing for uh, your classes of fish. We, and we haven't had that much. We haven't had much for good natural reproduction of most fish species the last couple summers. So this year might be, or 2017 might be a real good one. You and your crews had a very unique way of stocking these opportunistic lakes. When they did winter kill, you didn't let that uh, detract you from uh, going right. and stocking them again, but actually you were taking them from one lake and putting them in another lake. Exactly, and that's, you know, that's one of the fish management tools that's probably changed you know, today versus 20, 30 years ago. The guys are really good at getting out there in the spring, and, and if we know of the winter kill, if we know, especially if we know it's a significant or a total winter kill, where we have the ability in most cases to get fish, different species stocked into that lake immediately. If it's really small, some of these uh, community fisheries are you know, maybe 10 acres or less, we can get catchables in there right away. Trout, sometimes catfish, perch, you know, even bluegill, stuff like that. Uh, the other thing is no matter, no matter the size, if we know about it, that there is a winter, it has been a winter kill, we get our stocking rates, whether it's pike, the fingerling stuff. Now, pike or walleye, we get it stocked pretty good right away. And we, you know, even though it winter killed, we can have a decent fishery, even in a bigger water body, or oh, maybe two, three years later. So the turnaround nowadays versus 20 years ago is a lot quicker that we can get a fishery up and running. How can people that have a local fishery tell if there's been a yeah. winter kill in their lake yeah. and report it to you? Yeah, and that's, that's a very good question. Now, and, and you can tell, especially as you get into February, March, and maybe people are get, get out there and you know, the snow's settled and people can get out and fish a lot more. When they drill holes, they're gonna smell it, but most oftentimes they'll actually see fish come, minnows, fathead minnows in particular. You'll see minnows come out of your hole, dead or dying. Uh, if you, and if the public sees that, we'd appreciate a, a phone call or something. Sooner the better, because the sooner we know about, we can go out and check it and then we can get it into that routine to be restocked. So the rest of the winter is pretty much wait and see. Huh? Oh man, it, it is wait and see. Uh, we got we got a lot of winter potentially still ahead of us, but uh, uh, so far our data shows that we're on we're we're in decent shape. But let, let's revisit this in a couple months. It's all good news. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thanks. All right. The 2017 legislature is now in session, and there are bound to be a few outdoor bills involved. If you plan to follow the session and track bills pertaining to the outdoors, here's a very valuable tool. The legislative page on the Game and Fish website. It'll give you a reference number for each bill, a brief explanation of the bill and how it might affect outdoors men and women, and we'll also have links to contact your lawmaker in every legislative district in North Dakota. Log on to the Game and Fish website at gf.nd.gov You'll find the legislative page under the seasonal shortcuts on the home page. Also, you can sign up to receive email notifications of new bills or any other changes to legislation. For Greg Power and the rest of the staff here at North Dakota Game and Fish, thanks for joining us for Outdoors Online. We'll see you again next week.